Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome you to the next uh, class of the Logari Chemistry of Life, Principles and Perspectives. So, so far we have uh, tried to complete most of the introductory uh, items which are necessary to build this particular course. Now, as a part 2 kind of a thing, we will start looking at each of the metal ion which is important in the biological system and the corresponding proteins or enzymes and look at their uh, function bit more details than what we have seen initially. So, as a continuation in that let us start with first alkali alkali ions uh, because, because these are mainly the kind of uh, ions which either uh, involve in a weak kind of an interaction with the enzymes they uh, activate the enzymes by the weak interactions. Uh, or they are involved in uh, kind of a charge neutralization, other kinds of functions as well. Let us start with alkali, alkali earth ions. Also, these appear uh, as the first uh, elements that we come across when you look at the periodic table. So, uh, we, I have already talked to you earlier the kinds of ions that are involved in the biological system of which if you look at alkali, alkali earth, what are the important alkali, alkali earth ions in the biological system? The alkali alkali earth ions in the biological systems which are important, which are important in the life processes are sodium potassium among the alkali and magnesium calcium among the alkali earth ions. Therefore, it is very appropriate to look at their concentrations in the human system or human tissue. Okay? Or we can categorize cell inside which is called intracellular, cell outside which is called the extracellular. So, let us look at the concentration of these ions extracellular and intracellular. See very interestingly if you look at these ones you will see the sodium having 145 these are all in millimolar outside the cell only 10 millimolar inside the cell. If you look at potassium it is more or less reverse the 5 millimolar in the extracellular and uh, uh, 150 millimolar in intracellular. So, what is this? How do we un try to understand? Already we know that there are a huge number of enzymes which are inside the cell, they are activated by the potassium ions. Those proteins are activated by potassium ions. Therefore, the concentration of these potassium ions inside the cell is very high. And also important, we will come to know in a while, their concentrations from inside versus outside has to be maintained. That brings in something called transport, which I am going to explain very soon. Now, so what do we see? Among the sodium and potassium, sodium is uh, large outside the cell, potassium is large inside the cell. So, we, which means the proteins, intracellular proteins, are mostly activated by potassium as compared to the sodium. That you will accept uh, uh, when I show the uh, enzymes the involvement of whether it is sodium or potassium in a, just in a while you will certainly appreciate that. Okay, the next aspect we look at is magnesium and calcium. You can see that magnesium and calcium, magnesium has got 2 millimolar extra 15 millimolar intra, and calcium has got both intra, uh, extra and intra almost the same. So, this is another aspect, this aspect is there is a greater concentration of magnesium ions inside the cell as compared to that of the calcium ion. In fact, we know that there are a large number of calcium uh, activated proteins, calcium triggered proteins inside the cell in spite of the concentration of the calcium is low. So, this means this provides a challenge to the system, the biological system to the nature how do you come over? Because uh, a, a magnesium may activate a calcium protein because the magnesium concentration is high. So, which means nature has to circumvent this kind of a phenomena by another method which I will explain very soon. Though the concentration of the 
calcium 2 plus is very small compared to that of the magnesium 2 plus inside the cell. Calcium proteins are not activated by magnesium ions though its concentration is high because of special modification that the nature has taken in those proteins. Okay. I will explain that. So, what kind of modification? Generally carboxylates are added to the protein. So, more carboxylates, more binding to calcium rather than to the magnesium. I will explain this better uh, later. Now, concentration of the proton concentrations and chloride concentrations are all there. So, these are important phenomena to maintain the concentrations inside versus outside. See the chloride outside is large. Okay. Proton uh, concentrations are more or less same both inside and the outside too. So, therefore, this inside versus outside the cell concentration of these ions have to be maintained and that is what is actually happening by these transport systems. Before we go into the transport systems, let us look at some properties of these ions. First, let us look at the properties of the alkali ions. I know that the only lithium and sodium, uh, so sodium and potassium are essential or important in the context of biological systems. Lithium role is not still shown by any protein, but lithium is an as kind of a essential trace element. Of course, the rubidium and cesium are not the biological elements, but we'll just look at some uh, alkali, uh, the properties, coordination properties like ionic size as you go, or ionic radii. If you look at 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.95, 1 0.3, so it increases as expected. We will not go into the details of this, how it increases, etc. That will be shown, explained in your 11th and 12th standard uh, chemistry courses the charge density because as the as the uh, size increases the denominator charge density means charge uh, square by r so r is your radius so therefore as the radius goes up the value of the charge will go down and the charge density will go down because charge is same for all of them one one square is one one by uh, this one by that one by that one by that etc etc so, that means you have more charge density and lithium as compared to sodium as compared to potassium etcetera etcetera. This will definitely influence the reactivity. Now, exchange reactions, we already talked about the liability. The liability is basically guided, gazed, understood by the water exchange between the uh, outer of the, the coordination sphere versus inside the coordination sphere, inside coordination sphere versus outside. So, between the outside to inside exchange is the one which is. So, if you look at lithium, you have very high kind of thing 10 power 8, sodium 10 power 10, uh, potassium uh, and rubidium. So, once the size of this is increased, it is almost the same. So, these are all at a diffusion rates. So, the reactivities are quite good and kind of a coordinations. Lithium can show most of the time 4, occasionally, very occasionally, less frequently 6. The sodium shows more frequently 6 and potassium can show 6, occasionally 7 and 8 and similarly rubidium and cesium. But we are not so much interested in rubidium and cesium, we are interested in basically sodium and potassium in these things. So, as you can see, the size increase, charge density decrease the rate of exchange of interactions and the coordination numbers, these are some important. So, having looked at the alkali ions, let us look at alkaline earth ions. Again, we know all among the alkaline earth ions, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, what are important in the biological systems? Magnesium and calcium. So, you go from very small size of the beryllium to a bit uh, considerable size to magnesium to larger size and larger and larger. Similarly, charge obviously will uh, decrease now. And now you can see with very small size, very small exchange rate. For magnesium, it is a reasonably good, 10 power 6 is a reasonably good rate. Calcium, 10 power 9, and if you go to beyond, so 10 power 6 to 10 power 9. Their coordination numbers, barely not important because they are highly reactive ion and they are not present in the biological systems. What is present is magnesium. 2 plus and calcium 2 plus. Magnesium most of the time shows 6, calcium shows most of the time 6, occasionally 7, very rarely 8 too. So, therefore, 6, 6, 7 and 8, these are some important properties that we need to understand and utilize during our uh, studies. 
As I told you in the earlier uh, slide that the concentration of the potassium is very high inside the cell whereas for sodium it is very high outside the cell. And I also mentioned as a result of that many of the proteins are activated inside the cell by potassium not by sodium. So, that you can see here uh, there are several enzymes do you need to remember all this? No, not at all. How do you understand this? By the class it is called kinase, it is called synthetase, okay, kinase, thiokinase a part of kinase, carboxylase, uh, decarboxylase etc., transferase, hydrase or dehydrase, dehydrogenase. So, try to see the classes, these classes are all we have learned, we have heard all of them. What is important to learn is so potassium ion, potassium ion, potassium ion, potassium ion, potassium ion, potassium ion, only sodium and sodium here, here potassium, potassium uh, in this. So, you can see that and if you go to the next you will see mostly potassium, potassium. So, what you have seen among all these enzymes, okay, the enzymes of kinases, phosphatases, carboxylases, decarboxylases, uh, dehydrases all of these are synthetases. Primarily it is the potassium plus in a few cases sodium plus and there are some bracketed values are shown bracketed species are shown some ammonium. Some of the species can be activated even by ammonium ions uh, in that too. So, therefore, what is the relative uh, activations? If you look at all these enzymes the maximum activation of the intracellular proteins are activated by potassium and not by sodium a few of them are sodium and if you take ammonium ion uh, do affect in enzyme action very limited cases, but affinity is very very low. So, you can forget simply ammonium ion uh, role. So, look at only potassium and sodium ion roles. Now, thus the activation of the, uh, the proteins or the affinity of binding of these potassium and sodium either way you can explain. You can talk about the their affinity binding affinity or their activation levels of the enzymes either way the trend is potassium is far far superior than sodium which is superior than that of the ammonium. So, of course, we are very much interested in the potassium and sodium and if you see the potassium and sodium I have shown three uh, greater than symbols potassium is greater than further greater than greater than sodium plus. So, that means the potassium is more very much more important in the enzymes present in the intracellular biological systems. Therefore, that is very appropriate to take it is granted that the most of the intracellular proteins are activated by potassium not by the sodium only a few of them. When they activate these enzymes how do they look like in terms of their binding in terms of their coordination. Okay? The coordinations we know uh, already we have studied the geometries, the 4 coordination, the 5 coordination, the 6 coordination, the 7 coordination, the 8 coordination all of these we have looked at in the earlier stage of this particular course. Now, if you look at some of these we are talking about the M plus, so M plus means it could be a sodium plus, it could be a potassium plus. I have given some examples different enzymes, no need to remember at all. So, here is uh, one of the enzyme where an M plus ion mostly the sodium ion kind of thing uh, is involved with four nearest neighbor oxygens and they are all interacting by ion dipole. The oxygen is a dipole, oxygen center is a dipole, uh, the Na plus or K plus is an ion. So, ion dipole interactions and you know these interactions are not as strong as the covalent ones, they are weak interactions and that is how it is present here you can see that there are uh, oxygens where they are coming from we will explain in a while. I take another example this uh, dialkyl glycine decarboxylase in this case there are 5 coordination with respect to M plus this is uh, by 3 of them is the trigonal and 2 of them is, is, is the axial trigonal bipyramidal kind of a situation. Take another one uh, where we have a octahedral 6 oxygens you can see that another uh, fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate aldolase. So, this is a different enzyme. Okay. Uh, many of the enzymes have got various uh, sodium centers, uh, sodium binding positions, potassium binding positions or specific binding positions too. Take some more examples, this is 7 coordination, okay, pentagonal bipyramid, 
that the example is shown over through and eight coordination is a cubic kind of thing four on the top four on the bottom okay and the example is shown like this. So, what are we seeing in all these cases metal ion is bound to 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 oxygen centers number 1 and their geometries are not perfect at all their geometries are not ideal they are all uh, the geometries which are distorted you know distortion when it comes to we always think it is not good distortion is very good for bond breakage and bond breakage. Bond breakage and bond breakage is very important for catalysis for reactivity. So, therefore, distorted geometries should not be underestimated should be given enough importance because they are important in the catalysis too. So, ideal geometry is rarely observed most of the time distorted geometries these such distortions may have importance in their function in their mechanism of activating the enzymes. So, that is what I told you uh, they are more important for activity for function for catalysis. And then mostly oxygen centers where are the oxygens are coming from? The oxygens are coming from the peptide carbonyl oxygen, the oxygens are coming from side chain carboxylate oxygens, the oxygens are coming from water oxygens these are the main sources for the oxygen. Nevertheless, all of these alkali ions sodium and potassium in the biological systems more or less exclusively bonded by oxygen atoms more or less exclusively bonded by oxygens with maybe a few exceptions. So, let us not worry about those exception part mostly that is the kind of thing that we have. So, let us look at the same taking one example dialkyl glycine decarboxylase. Decarboxylase you can understand you are removing the carboxylic group that is what it is decarboxylation kind of thing. So, there is a carboxylic group which you are removing it is called decarboxylic. This enzyme has a site 1 in the site 1 here the potassium is binding there is a uh, enzyme in the site 1 can also be bound by the sodium plus and there is a site 2 which is below here we can be bound by the sodium. So, site 1 potassium site 1 sodium site 2 uh, sodium like this. So, you have different sites are involved in the enzymes these are these are bonded by these are interacted by the sodium and potassium, but more or less all of these are by sodium and potassium only when you talk about the monovalent cations. No other alkali, alkali, alkali ion is involved in the biological processes the protein structure is shown over there here. Uh, you can see the the helices ribbons etcetera these are the ions which are bonded. Let us take this particular example what it does uh, you take a 2 2 prime dialkyl glycine that means glycine is CH 2 and that instead of 2 hydrogens 2 methyl groups take 1 methyl group 1 methyl group. So, this is what is called 2 2 dialkyl glycine and in presence of the pyruvate you can see that pyruvate CH 3 CO uh, uh, minus is a basically propanic acid, but the one of the carbon is oxidized to keto. So, it is kind of a uh, that pyruvate and this under this enzyme diglycine decarboxylase when it acts on these particular substrates it will convert it will uh, convert this into uh, oxidized form here carbon. So, it becomes a ketone and the CO2 is uh, knocked out the CO2 will go away and the remaining part will make into an alanine because it is going to react with uh, uh, the other molecular framework of this one. So, therefore, you get this uh, amination and then get this particular thing. So, uh, so dialkyl glycine plus pyruvate is converted by this enzyme to ketone, acetone, CO2 and alanine kind of thing. Now, you understand. So, uh, the further exact role of this is not a part of this particular course we do not need to really worry occasionally we will explain their activities in various things too. So, so, I think that will make uh, a kind of a, a situation for alkali ions. Let us look at alkaline earth ions. What are the alkaline earth ions? Alkaline earth ions are important are magnesium and they also important is calcium. So, if you look at the magnesium situation we have seen that the magnesium concentration is about 15 millimolar in cell and it is about 2 millimolar for calcium. So, magnesium is quite well prevalent in various ways there are 300 enzymes which require the presence of 
Vignesham ions for their catalysis. In some way or the other, Vignesham ions are important there. Uh, there are uh, uh, enzymes where enzymes may utilize the ATP, enzymes may synthesize the ATP. In both of these cases, the Vignesham 2 plus is a must. Without the Vignesham 2 plus, ATP synthesis, ATP hydrolysis does not take place. That you have to keep in mind throughout the course of this. So, there is a lot of enzymes which require the magnesium 2 plus ion and is also uh, involved in other nucleotides to synthesize DNA RNA, but at the level of the, the enzyme. So, there are a large number of enzymes which are activated by magnesium 2 plus and the magnesium 2 plus uh, is involved in activating in, in doing that function. What kind of functions are the magnesium? They are kinases, I already talked to you. What is a kinase? Kinase is, is nothing but phosphorylation. They do phosphorylation. They bring some phosphoryl or phosphate kind of a moiety and act on the substrate. Okay. Phosphatase, they already the phosphate is there, you hydrolyze that and remove it. So, hydrolysis of the phosphate moiety is basically uh, the phosphorylation or adding the phosphate group, etc. These are all examples, not so important. There are several examples are there. So, so many kinds of examples are there. You can always look at. Uh, just for a, a completeness, I have given this. So, like creating kinase, adenylate kinase, etc. So, the kinases are they directly transfer the phosphoryl group to the protein. It is also called phosphorylation. Okay. Phosphatase is a hydrolysis. So, you basically bring the phosphate moiety out of this one. Okay. So, there are so translocation of ATPases linked to the cation that is also taking from one position the phosphoryl moiety to another position that is also there or you can also have phosphate moiety shifted from one side to the other side as well due to the phosphate phosphorylation dephosphorylation. So, these things happen because of the phosphorylation and dephosphorylation. These are uh, made part of sodium potassium ATPase, magnesium calcium ATPase. These are called ATPase pumps which work to maintain the balance, the uh, ion concentration across the membrane, uh, across the cell inside versus outside. These, sometimes these are also uh, connected by the proton transfer too. So, ion transfer, proton transfer cation transfer, proton transfer, it could be a ca uh, alkali ions or it could be alkaline earth ions. So, all of these. So, these are the uh, involved in phosphate transfer etcetera in this. There is a uh, mutases are they. So, uh, between different substrates the phosphoryl transfer. Okay. So, uh, so phosphoglucomutase. Okay. So, glucose 6 uh, to glucose 1 phosphate, 6th position to 1 position kind of thing. So, you are going from one to the other. So, it is a kind of a isomerizing, it is a kind of an isomerizing too. So, we take from one place and putting it in another place. So, overall composition is the same, but the position is different, therefore, their, their uh, other properties are different. Lyases, so uh, hydrolytic functions, there are different kinds of hydrolysis. Biosynthetic process, because you add things you elongate things, it could be poly polymerases, uh, it could be synthetases. So, all these kinds of uh, proteins like uh, uh, kinases, phosphatases, mutases, lyases, uh, the synthetases or polymerases, in all the cases the magnesium ions are required absolutely. Now, let us look at the calcium ion case. As I told you just a while ago that the concentration of magnesium 2 plus is quite large in the inside the cell as compared to that of the calcium 2 plus. The magnesium 2 plus concentration is 15 millimolar while the calcium 2 plus pro, uh, concentration is 2 millimolar is about 7 to about order of magnitude high. But there are large number of calcium containing proteins inside the cell and therefore, the question is that can the calcium proteins or enzymes be activated by magnesium. If it does, then it is a great danger. You know why? Because the calcium or magnesium may activate many of the enzymes of the calcium and start doing calcium role. And that is a 
greater disadvantage because that cannot be triggered functions. So, therefore, calcium proteins must evolve differently in the inside the cell as compared to that which is activated by the magnesium tumors. For this the nature has done very wisely by adding some carboxylic groups to the uh, to the amino acid side chains like side, side, side chains of glutamic acid, aspartic acid you add some carboxylic groups. Already there is one carboxylic group in glutamic in uh, aspartic, but the in post translational modification for the calcium proteins the additional carboxylic group is added and such kind of uh, added proteins are called GLA proteins. Okay. And they have gamma carboxy glutamic acid that means glutamic acids are modified with one additional carboxy group. So, that means what you have a center you see that and a lot of these things are carboxylic groups. There is a carboxylic group, there is a carboxylic group, there is a carboxylic group, there is a carboxylic group. So, all these carboxylic groups, so therefore, you have a carboxylic rich regions in proteins of the calcium and such regions are not present in the magnesium. So, therefore, a clear cut difference is coming uh, in case of uh, calcium proteins versus the magnesium proteins. Therefore, calcium proteins cannot be activated by magnesium ions even though the magnesium concentration is tenfold greater than that of the calcium concentration. Now, you understand? You understand why the calcium proteins are not activated, are not controlled, are not regulated by the magnesium ions, though the magnesium concentration is almost tenfold excess, tenfold greater inside the cell as compared to calcium. It is because the nature has modified the protein that are present by adding a carboxylic group to its side chains and such addition of the carboxylic groups uh, brings to gamma carboxyglutamic acid from a simple glutamic acid. And that will create in proteins a regions which are very highly carboxylic rich. That means calcium is highly carboxylic philic whereas magnesium is not carboxylic philic. It prefers more of a ether like oxygens, water like oxygens, carbonyl like oxygens and a little bit of carboxylic, but not as much. Whereas, calcium will prefer more of a carboxylic like oxygens. Therefore, calcium does not touch the magnesium proteins, magnesium ions does not touch the calcium proteins, even though they are living together inside the cell. And that is absolutely important uh, information. So, further let us look at, we have looked at in case of magnesium 2 plus what are the kinds of uh, functions. We have seen uh, kinases, phosphatases, butases, synthetases, polymerases, etcetera, etcetera. Let us look at in case of calcium 2 plus. In the calcium 2 plus, you have uh, calcium 2 plus has got several kinds of uh, uh, functions like uh, trigger functions, okay. So, enzyme and pumps, uh, contractile systems, muscle systems, nerve cells, okay, phosphatase activities, transport activities, as you can see, all of these. These are the names of the enzymes which are. Uh, having that function, prothrombin extracellular trigger, calmodulin intracellular trigger, it will trigger the functions. So, that means concentration of the calcium controls that particular protein for their function. So, the enzyme and function uh, triggers the troponin C, triggers and contractile systems, trigger in some muscle cells, it triggers in nerve cells, phosphoprotein phosphatase and calcium transport. Let us look at some more, these are calcium uh, buffer actions are also important because calcium concentrations are important therefore, calcium buffer action is important. Sometimes when there is a calcium low this buffer protein will add calcium high concentration buffer protein will take up. So, therefore, that is an important thing that will happen in the biological systems in the cells then store cal sequestering, sequestering means sequestering the ion storage cal electric uh, promotion of the membrane aggregation because membrane potentials etc. Uh, in bone proteins, GLA proteins, uh, therefore, they are forming the crystal like and you know in the, the protection of the teeth. So, there is a proline rich kind of a proteins are there which are controlled by the calcium to give these are called the saliva proteins. So, various kinds of things that you can see in the calcium binding uh, proteins. So, let us look at since these are there, what kind of a binding ability, stability they have a binding constant. Some of the binding proteins of the calcium, they are 10 power 9, 
some of them 10 power 6. So, they have there are paraalbumin there are 2 calcium sites, cal bindin 2 calcium sites, calmodulin 4 calcium sites, troponin uh, there are 4 calcium sites. Uh, so, these are 10 power 9 and 10 power 6. Let us look at some ore. Uh, these are the there is one calcium site in staphylococcal nuclease, calcium 1 uh, uh, one site which is 10 power 5, uh, the phospholipase A2 there are 2 sites 10 power 5 for 1 case, 10 power 3 and trypsin 10 power 4 and there are thrombin and uh, phosphodentine material in teeth 10 power 3. So, what we have seen 10 power 3 up to 10 power 9. So, here 10 power 9 as you go to 10 power 6 as 10 power 5, 10 power 3. So, like. so, there is a great range of binding strengths. So, this is the strength of the calcium why calcium can interact to show trigger functions, can show other kinds of functions as well in the enzymes of these. And uh, to sum up of all this, let us look at uh, the binding strengths of all these metal ions. So, the metal ion affinity towards the cellular proteins, if you take calcium, magnesium, potassium and sodium, calcium is much much greater than magnesium, is much much greater than potassium, is much much greater than sodium. 10 power 6 to 10 power 3 to 10 power 1 to 10 power minus 1. So, the average is about 1000 fold difference, about uh, 100 fold difference, about 100 fold difference. So, that is the one of the uh, real critical uh, point that one needs to keep in mind different affinities triggering the proteins very much differently and I will come to more properties of this in the next class. Thank you very much.